And now I'm coming down to these buttons. Now these buttons are all important to this channel. So it starts here with this little red button. This little red button on this console, it says on it, it says 48 volt phantom. This is phantom power. And it sends 48 volts down your microphone cable to power your condenser microphones. When we get into the whole microphone section, you're going to see that condenser microphones need power. Dynamic microphones do okay with phantom power, but some ribbon microphones don't. Now this button right here is a pad. It's a little brown button. It says pad on it. Now I forget exactly what, uh, how much of a pad this is. It might be 18 or 20 decibels or something like that. I just forget exactly what it is. The, on each board, the pads are different. But it might be a 10 decibel pad or a 20 decibel pad. And what that would mean is, before I explain that pad, let me explain this input volume. It's called the trim. This is an amplifier. Of course, it has a potentiometer that controls the amplifier. All right. But it is an amplifier. It is the amplifier that, that the uh, microphone goes into so that its volume can be raised to line level. So the output of this amplifier is line level. The input is mic level. Any amplifier operates its most efficiently at between 60 and 80 percent of its capacity. That's why the guitar players get their guitar amp and they turn it up to 100 percent of the capacity so they can distort it. Well, it makes a sound that has creeped into the contemporary sound. So, all of a sudden, 11 on the guitar amp is a desirable setting because of the sound. But what you are really doing is overdriving the amplifier and using it at its most inefficient capacity. You don't want to do that with these guys. <laughs> these are different. They do not want to be overdriven and used at its most you know, inefficient capacity. You want to learn the gain staging process of getting this level correct, getting this level correct, getting this level correct. You've got some levels here, amplifying levels. This is an amplifier here. This is an amplifier here. This is an amplifier here. And between them, you have to operate them at their most efficient capacity so that you get the cleanest, purest sound out of the other end of that amplifier. Because you are going to take a sound and electronically mess with it. Well, remember, your job is to make it sound the same way when it comes out of the speakers that you heard it in this room before it hit that microphone. And it's got to go through all this. I want this amplifier to function up here, if you can see that. It's up at about two-thirds to three-quarters, right? Let's just say up there. I'm going to turn all these other ones down so you can notice the difference between this one. Uh, number six that's turned up to about two-thirds, right? Now, down here, there's a little red light on this channel, right down there. It's small, and it says clip on it. What happens is as soon as this input amplifier starts to distort, this red light will go on, and it'll say, you're clipping. Now, I could expect to get that on my amplifier if I go above three-quarters, Okay, well, all right, it's starting to clip. I better back off a little bit so it doesn't distort the amplifier. But if I just crack this thing open and already it starts clipping, that means the microphone is very sensitive. And I've got to protect this circuit. So I'm going to go to six, and I'm going to put this pad in, and that pad is going to cut back the signal by 20 decibels. Ooh, now I can raise this amplifier up to its efficient capacity, two-thirds. Because going into it, I cut it back with this, this circuit that does not affect the frequency response. In other words, it does not affect the sound. It just lowers the volume coming in before it hits this amp so it doesn't distort that amp. So if I need it, I've got this pad right here. It's a volume level change. I can push this in and it will lower the volume or the voltage coming into this channel so that it, it's not too much for this amp. The red, in this case, would be this clipping light down here. It's a nice little tool. It tells you how this amplifier is seeing the signal in your first stage here. Once in a while, you like to see the little clipping light go on to just say, oh yeah, you're alive and you're giving me a lot of signal. And I like that. With analog tape, 
we have noise on the tape and circuit noise in analog. And we try to record our signal hot enough above that circuit noise so that we can turn the volume down and there at the same time turn the noise down. So I would really like to record my signal as strong as I can just before it starts distorting, before the clipping light goes on. This way I've got a signal to noise ratio that is bigger. The signal here, which is your, the peak volume of your signal, to the noise level, which is the noise of the tape and the noise of the circuits, that you want to be wide so that, wow, look at how far the signal is above the noise. I can turn it down, that noise goes away. That's why we record very, as strong as we can in analog. You put a cassette in, and you hit play, and it's on the leader. And then you can tell when the tape starts, because you hear the noise. You know, they put the cassette in, you go, play. That's well, you just came on the tape, because the leader was before that. There's usually seven seconds of leader on a cassette. No, that's not a distortion. That's just the noise of the tape, because it is a magnetic field. So, but the tape will make noise, and then your circuits will make noise. Well, the noise is supposedly gone in digital, uh, but then you're still going through circuits. Uh, but then again, if you're dealing with the high-end digital, yeah, your noise is gone. You know. But there's dither, there's other little problems in digital. There's always something. All right, so back to this. So this pad here would allow me to Pad that signal coming in so it isn't too much to overdrive this amplifier.